Are you guys tired of dealing with weird firmware issues on your Ender 3 S1 or just weird display issues if you've installed a community-based firmware? Well, today we're going to get rid of the color LCD and put on the 12864 that works perfectly with Marlin. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. After fighting with the stock firmware and screen on the S1 during our live unboxing, I figured the quickest way to just get this thing working and functioning as a proper printer would be to replace the color LCD and roll our own version of Marlin for it. And that's exactly what this kit does. So I'm going to show you guys how to switch out the LCD from the stock color one to the 12864. We're going to go over all the hardware installation steps and even the firmware setup. There's no opening the bottom of your printer. It's all done externally and a simple firmware update with the SD card. So let's go over what's in the kit and I'm going to show you how to do it. So the LCD conversion kit is very simple to install. We actually don't even need to open up the printer to do this. It's all external. We're going to remove the factory LCD and we're going to replace it with this bracket, the metal LCD ender bracket, and the LCD itself. The first thing we're going to do is unplug our Ender 3S1 from power. Once it's turned off, go ahead and press up on the bottom of the LCD. And then disconnect the cable from the stock LCD. Now we're going to take a 2.5 millimeter Allen key and remove the three screws here holding the stock bracket. We're going to reuse these screws for the new one. So now with the stock bracket removed, we're going to take these three screws we took out of it and use them to attach the new bracket to our S1. Go ahead and make sure these are nice and tight. Now we need to install the new LCD into the metal bracket. So in the package with the LCD bracket, you will have six screws. We have the knob, which we'll put on after the LCD is in the new bracket. And we have two M5s. These are going to be used later. And then we have four M3 screws. So we're going to need a two millimeter Allen key here. Take the LCD and line it up. Then we're going to put a screw in each of the holes on the corners to attach the LCD to the bracket. Now the LCD is installed in the bracket. Go ahead and press the knob onto the encoder. You can see here on the knob, there's a hole in the center. This goes over the encoder knob. Now we're going to take a three millimeter Allen key and we're going to thread the M5 screws into the printed part here. This will be a tight fit because we're threading these directly into the plastic. Make sure once these bottom out, you can tighten them up, but do not over tighten them because you will strip the plastic out if you hulk them down. Now the new LCD is attached and you can see it's very stable. On the LCD here, we have three headers. We're going to plug into the one that's closest to the printer. This one is labeled EXP3. Take the original cable that was plugged into the stock LCD and plug it into EXP3. Now at this point, we are done with the physical installation. I'm gonna switch over to the computer and we're gonna show you how to set the firmware up. So the last step is we're going to set up and compile the firmware, flash it, and then we're done. So head over to our website, hover over the help center, click downloads, and then we can go to Creality, Creality Boards, and we're gonna get the Ender 3 S1 firmware for the 2451301 board. So go ahead and download this. And once the download completes, go ahead and open it and extract it to a folder on your computer. I'm gonna go ahead and extract this on my computer here. I'm just putting it in a folder that I use for firmware. Just make a note of where you put this folder. And I like to copy it and then hit okay. 
Go ahead and load VS Code. And I'm going to go to File, Open Folder, and I'm going to paste in the path I extracted it to. Then double click the folder labeled firmware and hit select folder. It's very important you select the firmware folder when opening it. If you select the wrong folder, it will not work. So all I need to do now is expand the Marlin folder here. Double click configuration.h. I'm going to tell it I have the Ender 3 S1. I'm going to do a control S to save it. If you look here, the Ender 3 S1 12864 LCD option is uncommented. In later releases, we may change this. So just be aware that if it is not uncommented, you will need to uncomment it if the firmware is updated in the future. Now all we need to do is click the little check mark in the bottom left here, and this is going to then build the firmware. So I'm gonna let this build and then I'll be right back. So we can see here our firmware has successfully compiled. I'm going to take an SD card and put it into an SD reader on my computer and make sure that the SD card is formatted with a FAT32 file system. You can see here, mine already is. If it's not, go ahead and format it. I'm going to expand the PIO build and then STM32 F103 folder here. I'm gonna right click, hit reveal in file explorer and go into the folder and we're gonna look for the firmware bin file. Now this board requires a different firmware name every single time you flash it. So if you go ahead and compile multiple times, you will end up having multiple bin files in the folder. If you do have multiple bin files in the folder, look at the date modified to determine which is the last compiled one. So you can see here, this is 242. If I had multiple compiles, I would look and see what the timestamp is on the file to determine what my latest one is. You can also look here. It tells you in the output terminal in VS Code what the name of the file is that it just compiled. So I'm going to take this and copy this over to my SD card. And now I'm ready to flash the printer firmware. So take your SD card, put it into the printer, and we're gonna go ahead and turn power on. And you'll see the LCD will be blank for a little bit. And then once the firmware finishes updating, you'll see our logo come up on the screen. And just like that, we've now updated the firmware and changed out the LCD. I will recommend that you do what's called an EEPROM reset. So go and press the encoder go to configuration, go to reset EEPROM. It'll ask you to confirm. And now the EEPROM is reset. If you do not clear this out, there could be old settings lingering from the previous firmware that may make the machine run poorly. Now we're ready to test. So I can go ahead and go to motion, auto home. And now it's going to auto home the machine and we can print now. Now, one thing I do want to mention is the firmware is set up to assume you have the default printer configuration, meaning you have the CR Touch installed and no other modifications. So if you want to use either a custom probe mount or our easy ABL, you would then set additional settings in the firmware itself, and that will then override the out of the box configuration that we've set for this printer. One of the things I spent a lot of time tuning because it really bothered me how slow this stock firmware was is the probing speed is a lot faster even with the stock CR touch. So if I go and press the encoder button and I go to motion and level bed, you can see that it will probe a lot faster. So this is gonna go ahead and do an auto home and then it's going to do a three by three mesh on the bed. And this firmware also works perfectly with any slicer G code in our Ender 3 S1 video where we did the live unboxing, we had issues where it would not work correctly with Simplify 3D Slice code. Because this is running now standard Marlin, it will respond fine whether you're using Cura or Super Slicer or Matter Control or Simplify 3D, it's just going to work correctly. I've also spent a lot of time tuning the machine for faster performance, and I've also made sure that all the little bells and whistles that they did integrate into this printer are properly set up. One of those being the hot end fan, so it comes on when the printer is over 50 degrees C on the hot end and then shuts off after that. But you can see here, the probing is a lot faster, even with the stock CR touch probe, we will be able to get a lot faster probing speeds if we're using an easy ABL, but the stock firmware was painfully slow at leveling. 
So I'm just gonna run through the menu system here. We have our standard motion controls where we have our axes move settings here where X, Y, Z, and E are located. We also have auto home, X, Y, and Z. We also have bed leveling, and we also have the M48 probe test. So you can test to see if your accuracy on the probe is working correctly. Um, basically all these settings, if you have used our firmware before, are exactly the same as other printers that came with these 12864 LCDs. And now we have the LCD installed. You can go ahead and print and use it just like any other printer. You don't have to worry now about updates breaking things with the color LCDs because this LCD is driven directly from the processor. It's a lot easier to update your printer firmware going forward because if there's an update with Marlin, you just update the board. Whereas with the color screens, there are usually updates to Marlin that will then require you to also disassemble the color LCD and then update the firmware on the LCD. You don't have to worry about any of that with the 12864s. I understand some people may think that these are not as pretty, but in terms of functionality, these are my go-to because they just work. I hope you guys enjoy this kit. I hope you guys enjoy the firmware. And as always, happy printing.